Lots more still to come on Daily Planet. A little later on Planet Now, we'll check in on the volcano in Iceland that continues to erupt and wreak havoc on air travel. Plus, we're going to take you to a North American city where the cabs come in all colors, but green ones are taking over. And just ahead, because it's Tuesday, that means it's time for our super slow-mo segment. And on the menu today, the Apollo 11 launch. But first, not too long ago, we featured a team of students from Denmark hoping to perfect a vehicle that gets all its power from the wind and ideally even go faster than the wind. But unfortunately, they never quite realized their dream, but they did have a lot of fun trying, though. Turns out, though, that the idea wasn't such a crazy one after all. We hooked up with a different team, this time in California, out to prove all the naysayers wrong. There's a good wind blowing here in the Bay Area of San Francisco. Watch that kite! So Rick Cavallaro is taking his BUFC out for a spin. What's a BUFC, you might ask? Well, the B stands for big, the U stands for ugly, and the C stands for cart. I think downwind is going to be exciting. Believe it or not, this cart can go faster than the wind directly downwind. We do have a number of aero PhDs, professors, physics professors and PhDs that still assure us that it's impossible. Rick loves puzzles. One day for fun, he did some calculations that proved a vehicle could move faster than the wind yeah. using just the wind. He posted his work on the internet. I posted this as a brain teaser on those two forums, and what I really expected is for people to say, no, of course you can't. You know, when you get to wind speed, you're done. There's no wind over you when you reach wind speed. Um, and, you know, I would, I'd bat it around a little bit and then, and then post the answer. And I thought, you know, people would go, wow, that's, that's really clever. You know, that's fun. Uh, and it didn't work out that way at all. Instead, you know, I, I posted it and people said, no, you're an idiot. You know, you're, I, what a moron. How can you possibly think this? You're, it's a hoax. So now don't, don't be getting too harsh on me. No, you, I know. Or you'll bend the... So Rick and his good buddy JB went to work building something to prove his theory. It was the internet and something even stupider than the internet, and that, and that was JB. Um, J, you know, JB knows that, he, he finally said, Look, Rick, you're never ever gonna convince people, not by, not by showing them some vectors on paper, not by describing some analogies. He says, he, we, we have to build it. Rick hand carved this uh, prop, he laminated it up and then, and then uh, carved it out just kind of by eye. He didn't really have a, uh, a template for it. And we built it last winter, um, and it just barely worked, but it did prove the concept. They even made a model to mail to the non-believers. How it moves faster than the wind is a hard concept to grasp, but think of it as a loop, which provides thrust to push the cart downwind. This causes the wheels to turn, which in turn helps spin the propeller. It then catches more wind, and so on. It's not perpetual motion, but it is a feedback loop that is using the wind as the, as the energy source. It's, it's not unlike uh, talking into a mic right in front of the speaker. So the mic feeds the speaker, the sound comes out of the speaker and goes back into the mic, and that goes back to the speaker, and this feeds back and gets louder and louder. But that's not perpetual motion. That's plugged into the wall, and we're plugged into the wind. But still, most people aren't convinced it's possible. So that's when it got even worse. JB started getting the idea in his, in his head to build one that was full size and manned, you know, uh, that we could that we could actually go and, and set a record with in front of an organization that was recognized. That's why they've been building the BUFC. They've already got a thousand hours of work into it already. Combination of, of uh, wood, carbon fiber, fiberglass, and foam. It's a composite structure. Getting the right propeller has been the biggest challenge. We have a 17-foot propeller that, that uh, you know, we designed and built ourselves because unfortunately you, you can't buy them on eBay. The propeller acts like two different sails catching the wind. A very long bicycle chain attaches the prop to the transmission, which turns the wheels. The rims themselves and the tires are from a tandem bicycle. Um, but I couldn't trust the tandem bicycle hub because it didn't have enough width to withstand the lateral load. Um, a bicycle tilts when it goes around corners, so it doesn't get a lot of lateral strain on it. So I took uh, racing go-kart hubs, uh, wheels, sorry, uh, and milled them off and drilled them and, and made a set of wider, heavier-duty hubs 
particularly for this vehicle. Now, something this big needs lots of space and wind. So they took it down to the National Land Sailing Race in Ivanpah, California. We really wanted to take some, some conservative runs and just see how this thing behaves on the lake bed. The important thing to watch here is the orange ribbons. They indicate the direction of the wind. Notice as the vehicle starts out, the ribbons are flying toward the front of the vehicle. As it picks up speed, they stop moving. This is when the vehicle has reached wind speed. I had a little GPS mounted on the chassis just in front of me, and, and I was using the, the radio that I use uh, in, when I fly so that I could talk to the folks in the truck. And I would read out uh, vehicle speeds, uh, and they had, they had wind speeds uh, from the ground. Finally, the ribbons end up trailing behind the vehicle. We let it rip, and we were astonished to find that in 15 miles an hour wind, it got up to 30 miles an hour. It's not just going faster than the wind, it's going twice as fast. On the second day, we had it out in probably a 15 to 16 mile an hour wind, and we got it up to 45, and it was still accelerating when we broke the upper chain wheel. It, it just tore the chain wheel up. Now the hope is to get this thing as strong and as aerodynamic as possible. Put a bunch of sensors on it and go for an official record-breaking run. Our stated goal now is Pi. We want to get it to a little, a little more than three times the wind speed. But secretly, I would love to see us get to four. I'm not, I, I don't imagine four, but I, that would be fun. They just need enough wind and the right place to do it. And maybe then people will believe this big, ugly cart really can go faster than the wind. By the way, it seems the name BUFC didn't stick. Rick and JB are now officially calling their vehicle the Blackbird, a reference to the stealthy SR-71 Blackbird military aircraft. The new name is also a nod to the Greenbird, which recently set the wind-powered land speed record.